In the meantime, all phones are up and running again. So let's have a look at the result of our configuration changes. Ice phone, find. All phones are registered once again, um, but you will notice uh, that there is some difference now. Both 7912 IP phones now picked an IP address out of the data VLAN, while the 7965s both, so the one that is now configured uh, with a trunk port, um, both are still in the uh, picked IP addresses uh, from the voice VLAN. So uh, what does it mean? Um, let's just quickly confirm that uh, we can make uh, some phone calls. So let's call one of the 7912 phones. That's working. Um, let's make a call to the phone that's connected via trunk port. It's ringing as well. So um, all phones are up and running. We can make phone calls, uh, which then probably leads then to, to the question, hmm, then why, why should we stick to the best practices and recommended configuration? So let's move back to the slide. So we can still make phone calls, but what was the result now? If we have no voice VLAN, then the IP phone uh, picks an IP address from the data VLAN. And the same happens if we turn off CDP, then the switch has no chance to uh, tell the IP phone um, about the voice VLAN, which leads uh, in both cases um, to the IP phone picking an IP address from the data VLAN. So while the phones are working, of course, that's a security issue because now the uh, traffic, um, the voice traffic and the data traffic are no longer separated. They are in the same VLAN. And if I connect a PC to those IP phones, I can easily capture all the packets, uh, um, the voice traffic as well. So that's a security issue. The trunk port, we configured this, um, the port number seven as a trunk port. The phone um, still picks up an IP address uh, from the voice VLAN. But again, um, that's a security uh, problem, or raises a couple of security problems. Uh, I already mentioned that uh, we have to make sure that the um, native VLAN um, is the one that the PC needs in order to uh, connect to our data network. But uh, if we take a look at the command line and do a show interface um, fast Ethernet 7 switch port, we notice that now all VLANs are allowed. In this case, we only have the two VLANs uh, configured and active on our switch. But in a real network, we probably have at least uh, a few, if not uh, a couple of dozen or more VLANs. So all those uh, VLANs would be um, allowed on the uh, on this trunk. This does not only cause uh, all the broadcast traffic uh, from those other VLANs uh, to cross the trunk but also raises uh, security issues if we um, do not make sure that the PC has no access um, to those VLANs. So um, the minimum that we would need to do in this case, if we uh, configure a trunk port, we would have to uh, make sure that only um, the voice and data VLAN are allowed on this trunk, just to make the configuration correct in this case, so we would need a switch port trunk and have to modify the loud VLAN list, loud VLAN, and then we would only allow those two VLANs. If we now 
um, do a show interface R600 7 switch port. Then indeed we now notice that only VLAN 78 and 178 are allowed on this trunk. The uh, not no this one. The trunking native VLAN is uh, correctly set to the data VLAN. So if we were to configure this uh, port as a trunk for any reason, then we definitely have to make sure that we also properly define the native VLAN and remove all other VLANs um, from crossing this trunk. Otherwise, that's a security issue. But, of course, uh, in, in the real world, we should always stick to the uh, best practices configuration, because what we now did with the, with the trunk port is effectively exactly the same result um, that we achieved with the voice VLAN configuration. If we compare um, this configuration now with a port number eight, which is still probably configured, unmodified. Um, with those two commands, configuring the switch port as an access port, signing the VLAN 178, and then the voice VLAN. Um, if you if you look at the at the traffic in the in this case, it's exactly the same result over here with the trunk port. We have uh, VLAN 178 um, as the native VLAN, so that's Ethernet, and the VLAN 78 uh, will be tagged um, using using dot one Q encapsulation. Uh, the result is the same, but this is the recommended configuration, um, and also this uh, switch port voice VLAN 78 command also enables port fast for us as well. So this concludes our discussions of the uh, voice VLAN. Um, in the next video, we will then um, have a look at power over Ethernet and DHCP configuration. Thanks for joining, and see you in the next video.